Hi first graders, today we're going to continue working on some graphs and answering questions about graphs. I made a graph here on my whiteboard. Please do not take the time to make the graph. You do need your whiteboard though as, as well as a marker. So grab yours and you're going to follow along with helping me answer some questions about the graph you see on my screen here. So let's take a look at our graph and review some parts of a graph that we need to be able to read in order to answer some questions. Because our goal today is to be able to answer questions about a graph, whether it be most or least or comparing two of the categories. Okay, my graph says shapes. So it's a graph of shapes. Maybe it was people who were asked what their favorite shape is. Maybe I was drawing shapes out of a bucket and I tallied how many I um, of each that I drew out of the bucket. But anyways, I'm keeping track of shapes on my graph. Now the first thing I like to do before I ever answer any questions about a graph is I just like to take a look. We notice our first shape here is a circle and there are hmm, some X's underneath. Now if I don't know what the X's mean, sometimes graphs have a little key here that says X equals one shape. So if there's one X, that means one circle was chosen. So how many circles were chosen? One two, three. Okay, Mrs. Garris loves, and Miss Combs loves, to first um, analyze, we'll call it. It's a fancy word. It means check it out and kind of think about some things. Analyze how many of each category. So, in circles we counted three X's. So there were three chosen circles. The next shape we have is what? a triangle. Let's count how many triangles were chosen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to go ahead and record that as well. And then the last one we see square. One, two, three, four squares. Okay. The numbers are going to help me here in a minute as we answer some of these questions because it helps you a lot. That way you don't have to count the X's every single time in case you forget. So I like to call that analyzing. I take a peek at how many of each and I like to label how many so that it helps me answer some questions about them. Now, if we were to look at our graph on shapes and I were to ask you how, or how about this? What shape had the most? What shape was chosen the most? Here's the word most. Okay, most means it's going to have the highest number of X's. Which shape was chosen most? Was it the circles, the three, seven for triangles, or four? For squares, which one is the most? Which number is the highest? Seven is, right? So we would not write seven as our answer. If you were asked which shape was chosen the most, you want to write the word. So the word we would write would be triangles. Those were chosen the most. All right, you don't have to write triangles with me. But just keep in mind when they ask something like that, they'll ask you how many if they want a number. If they want what shape, they're asking for the name of the shape, okay? Now we don't need to write anything for this, let's just brainstorm and see, okay, if triangles were chosen the most, who was chosen the least? Here's that word least, you'll see it in questions, least. Least means the smallest, it's the opposite of most. So which of these is the least? Well, we know that seven is the most, so we can really just ignore the triangles for right now and look at our circles and our squares. We have three and four. Which one is the smaller number? Right, the circles have the least. Good job. Okay. What if I were to ask you, how many circles and triangles were chosen? I want to write this question so that you can see it. Okay, you do not have to write it. 
oops, how many circles and triangles were chosen? Because there's a super important keyword here. How many, I'm going to make this look like a bigger circle so it doesn't look so much like an O. How many circles and triangles were chosen? Now here's our fancy word we want to pay attention to. And. That and is telling us, well, how many all together? How many circles and triangles? So if we have circles and triangles and we put them all together, how many am I going to have? Okay, that's what that word and is asking us. So we can use number sentences to help us with this. We can also do it in our head. Or since we have um, X's drawn, we can also use counting and counting on. So I'm going to show you one way. One way is the using a number sentence. How many circles? So I'm going to think, how many circles were there? Ah, three. Okay, there were three circles and triangles. How many triangles? There were seven triangles. Good job. Okay, now follow along with me and write this number sentence with me. If we're going to put these two shapes together, do you think we should use a number sentence that is adding or subtracting? Yes, we are going to add them together, right? So, let's start with our circles. We have three plus our triangles because we have that fancy word and seven equals something. Can you figure out how many circles and triangles were chosen and write your answer in your answer box? Good work. Did you come up with this answer? Three and seven make ten. Or if you didn't want to use a number sentence, look, here's our circles, here's our triangles. Let's count them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we get the same answer, right? Yes, or I could count down. I could do the triangles first and say, okay, seven eight, nine, ten. So I can use my graph to count or I could use a number sentence to help me. Let's answer another question. Our next question says, how many more triangles were there than squares? Okay, remember how I said that and was a pretty important word, that and tells us we're going to be putting two categories together? Well, if we have how many more, how many more tells us we're going to be finding a difference here. Okay. How many more of there are triangles than squares? We see there are more triangles, but how many more? We're going to be finding that difference, the difference between four and seven. And if we were to use our number sentence to help us, remember subtracting helps us find the difference between two numbers. So. We have the number seven and four. Will you help me set up my subtraction number sentence? Hmm. When we subtract, do we put the bigger or the smaller number first? Right, we're going to put the bigger number. So seven, take away what? What's our other category? How many more triangles, that's seven, were there than squares? How many squares, first graders? Four, so seven, take away four, equals something. Hmm, what is seven take away four? You could draw a picture here. You could say, ooh, they're kind of close. I could count on. I could go, okay, the difference between four to get to seven. Four, five, six, seven. Ooh, so that says three. What if I drew a picture? Would it be the same answer? Seven, 
Take away four, leaves me one, two, three. Yes. So the answer to how many more triangles were there than squares would give us three. We can use subtraction to help us figure out the difference, okay? Another phrase you might hear is this. And remember, first grader, you don't need to be writing the questions with me, but you do need to be practicing those number sentences and solving with me, okay? You might also hear this one. How many less, we'll say circles, were there than squares? So last time we had how many more, because there were more triangles than squares. This time it's how many less circles were there than squares. So we know circles are less than squares, but by how much? We have the numbers three and four. What is the difference between those two numbers? Now when we hear how many less or how many more, doesn't matter, we can still use subtraction to help us. So let's take three and four and make ourselves a subtraction number sentence if you like that strategy. We have four, the bigger number first, right? Take away three equals something. Hmm, well if I'm at three and I want to get up to four, how many more am I going to count? Three, three, four. Or if I have four and I take one, two, three fingers down, how many am I left with? Just one, so my answer would be one. Nice job. Okay, so our keywords to remember here today, first graders, are, I'm gonna leave that there. Our keywords today to remember when we're answering questions about graphs is when we maybe hear how many more or how many less or how much, this might say much too, how much more or how much less, we are going to be finding a difference. In order to find a difference, can we use adding or subtracting? We're going to subtract, so I'm going to put my takeaway sign right there. And if we hear the word and combining two categories, the word and tells us to combine two categories, we can use adding, right? Because that is what combining means. We're putting two parts or pieces together. So, see if you can practice some more today. You have an activity on Seesaw. There is no activity in your math book. So you can go straight back to Seesaw and click the green add response button, you will see a color graph and you have two pages of some questions. There are five questions all together and they will be using some of these terms. So, I hope you do great. And please let your teacher know if you have any questions when we answer questions or compare parts of a graph. Great working with me.